welcome back to Cindy's Library. And today I want to do Tolkien Talk and specifically do it for Tolkien Reading Day this year. Tolkien Reading Day is always on March 25th, the day that Sauron was overthrown. And it's a great excuse to read some Tolkien. So, oh, this year's theme is hope and courage. And so I wanted to do something related to that. And that is the Song of Arendelle. Now some background on this. Um, Tolkien, he wrote a song called Errantry, which uses a similar rhyme scheme and an even crazier meter. It was kind of a joke. It was fun. It was about a fairy who had lots of adventures of a miniature kind and ended up exactly at the spot where he began without actually delivering his message. So has to start all over again and the poem starts all over again if you let it. But over the years uh, it was modified until it became the Song of Arendelle, which in the Lord of the Rings is the song that Bilbo's shares in the Hall of Fire in Elrond's house in Rivendell, which is another topic I could go off on. Similarities between Arendelle and Bilbo, but that is a topic for another time. As for Arendelle himself, he was the greatest mariner ever of Middle-earth. Uh, couldn't have had better parentage. He was the son of Tuor, of a mixture of the most faithful houses of men in the first age. And his mother was Idril, daughter of Turgon, who was the king of the elven realm of Gondolin. And as for Arendel himself, like I said, he was the greatest mariner ever. Unfortunately, his days were perhaps some of the worst in that part of Middle-earth because, frankly, the war against the first Dark Lord and the primal Dark Lord Morgoth was going very bad. You had some enclaves by the sea that were safe-ish, but other than that, the whole of Beleriand, where the first Age's action primarily takes place was overrun by Morgoth. And so Arendelle decided he would go in search of Valinor in the true west where the Valar live. Now the Valar had placed a ban on some of the elves who had come back to Middle Earth not only without their permission, but in negative circumstances. And of course, mortals are banned from uh, the Undying Lands. But Arendelle was determined to go and plead for help for Middle-earth from the Valar before he suffered his sentence. So that's exactly what he did. He went over to Valinor and his wife, Elwing, came with him, and uh, she brought the Silmaril, which was the holy jewel that kind of, I suspect, allowed them to actually make it to Valinor. And he did indeed plead the cause of elves and men before the Valar. And they decided that instead of inflicting the punishment of death on him, they decided that his punishment would be to never be able to return to Middle-earth. And 
they set, well, they refined his ship and then they set it as the morning star with the Silmaril on it and as a warning to all darkness and as a sign of hope to people. And so Arundel had enormous courage to undertake this task, especially when he wasn't the first one to have thought of the idea of going back to Valinor and begging for help. No one else made it. But he did, and he fulfilled his mission. And ironically, he became a sign of hope while losing everything on Middle Earth. But that is his story. And in fact, Sam reference is to Frodo on the stairs of Kirith Ungol saying that they are in the same story still, since the file that Galadriel gave Frodo has the light of the star of A. Rendell, which is a very lovely thought. And so it's the sign still giving hope to Middle Earth. And hope and courage is certainly something we can use today, and Rendell's a good example of that. But for my actual reading, I want to now do the Song of A. Randall, which is my favorite Tolkien poem. All right. A. Randall was a mariner that tarried in Arbarian. He built a boat of timber filled in Nimbrathel to journey in. For sails he wove of silver fair, of silver were her lanterns made. Her prow was fashioned like a swan, and light upon her banners lay. In panoply of ancient kings and chained rings he armored him. His shining shield was scored with runes to ward all wounds and harm from him. His bow was made of dragon horn, his arrows shorn of ebony. Of silver was his habernon, his scalp scabbard of chalcedony. His sword of steel was valiant, of adamant his helmet tall, an eagle plume upon his crest, upon his breast an emerald. Beneath the moon and under star, he wandered far from northern strands, bewildered on enchanted ways, beyond the days of mortal lands. From gnashing of the narrow ice where shadows lie on frozen hills, from nether heats and burning wastes, he turned in haste, and roving still on starless waters far astray, at last he came to night of naught, and past a never sight he saw of shining shore, nor land he, nor light he sought. The winds of wrath came driving him, and blindly in the foam he fled, from west to east and errandless, unheralded he homeward sped. There flying Elwing came to him, and flame was in the darkness lit, more bright than light of diamond, the fire upon her carcinet. The Silmaril she bound on him and crowned him with the living light, and dauntless then with burning brow he turned his prow. And in the night from other world beyond the sea, their strong and free a storm arose, a wind of power in Tarmanel by pass that still seldom mortal goes. His boat it bore with biting breath, as might of death across the sea, and long forsaken seas distressed from east to west, he passed away. Through ever night he back was borne on black and roaring waves that ran o'er leagues unlit and foundered shores that drowned before the days began, until he heard on strands of pearl where ends the world the music long, where ever foaming billows roll, the yellow gold and jewels wan. He saw the mountain silent rise where twilight lies upon the knees of Valinor and Eldamar, beheld afar beyond the seas. A wanderer escaped from night to haven white he came at last, to elven home the green and fair, where keen the air where pale the glass, beneath the hill of Ilmarin, a glimmer in the in valley sheer, the lamplit towers of Tyrion are mirrored in the shadow mirror. He tarried there from errantry and melodies they taught to him, and sages old him marvels told in harps of gold they brought to him. They clothed him then in elven white, and seven lights before him sent, as through the 
Calacarian to hidden land forlorn he went. He came into the timeless halls where shining fall the countless years. In endless reigns the elder king in Ilmarin on mountain sheer. And words unheard were spoken then of folk of men and elven kin. Beyond the world were visions shown forbid to those that dwell therein. A ship then knew they built for him, of mithril and of elven glass, with shining prow, no shaven oar nor sail she bore on silver mast. The silmaril as lantern light and banner bright with living flame to gleam thereon by Elbereth herself was set, who thither came, and wings immortal made for him, and laid on him undying doom, to sail the shoreless skies and come behind the sun and light of moon. From ever even's lofty hills where softly silver fountains fall, his wings him bore a wandering light beyond the mighty mountain wall. From rolls and then he turned away and yearned again to find afar his home through shadows journeying and burning as an island star. And high above the mist he came, a distant flame before the sun, a wanderer ere the waking dawn where gray the north land waters run and over middle earth he passed and heard at last the weeping sore of women and of elven maids in elder days and years of yore but on him mighty doom was laid till moon should fade and orbit star to pass and tarry nevermore on hither shores where mortals are forever still a herald on an errand that should never rest to bear his shining lamp afar the Flamifer of Westerness. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed that for this Tolkien talk and this Tolkien reading day. If you are celebrating Tolkien's reading day, I'd love to hear what you are reading from Tolkien. If you have any comments, suggestions, feel free to leave them. I'd love to hear them. Thank you for stopping by Cindy's library. And until next time, as always, I hope we all stay healthy and safe and happy reading.